Hello, 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 and welcome to uh, another weekly live stream here on uh, Here to Record channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, jumping in here, watching along, and we'll see how it goes. The idea today is to talk all about hitch to our gear, something I've been working on, well, actually for a couple of years now, but it's been in beta for the last few months. And then, um, I guess today and over the next seven days, I'll be properly releasing it, but this is the first live stream dedicated to it and I have more videos coming out all about it and ways you can use it but otherwise thank you so much for uh, for jumping in here and uh, joining me today let's have a look at the um, the live chat and see where people are tuning in from today it seems like all over the place at this point hello from um, let me just make sure you can see that yeah you can hello from the UK and uh, oh did I miss no I didn't miss any there uh, Germany and Canada and the US and hey from Brazil and Belgium and Florida and um, excellent people from people from all over the place another some somebody else from Germany there Kevin from the USA excellent excellent thank you for tuning in from Taiwan as well that's cool um, a lot of people from Germany interesting that's uh, fun to see and uh, yeah okay loads of people from Germany it seems like this is the perfect time of day for um, for uh, all sorts of people tuning in from Germany which is excellent Here's one. Um, I'm here for the live lunch. You you missed re read that. I I read that comment uh, a few minutes ago, just off air, and I got nervous that I had written live lunch somewhere. But um, I'm glad that it was just you that uh, that misread it, unless I really messed up somewhere along the way. Uh, from the Netherlands, from Missouri, um, Dripping Springs. Hey Randy, thanks for tuning in. I nice see you here. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little um, that little piece that I played out at the start there. Maybe I'll play it again after the uh, the main show. My idea, I ended up chatting with um, Jonas, the Play Out B creator this weekend, and we were just talking about stuff that, and I was telling him I'm releasing this uh, product on Monday properly, and he asked, you definitely have an epic video ready, right? I guess he was joking. Um, yeah, exactly, Ryan. Very nice Apple video. So that is the best I could... Um, I could come up with on the the short notice that I had there one day worth of uh, editing um, audio coming in very low no problem I will um, I will give you a little bit more audio for sure I was always messing around and testing stuff um, should be a little higher now coming in let me know if it's a little bit too low I can always talk about louder as well maybe that's too high uh, so I can tweak as the time goes on so popping back over to my screen here um, yeah, popped up a few notches. Maybe I overshot, and you can let me know. Definitely, great intro video looks good. Thank you so much. Spike is ready to um, hitch to our re ready to rock hitch to our gear from Berlin. Excellent. And someone else from Germany, which is cool to see. And hello, uh, Petra from Tech Condo. Thank you so much for tuning in as well. If you haven't watched it yet, I was on Petra's channel this uh, this weekend, and uh, we talked about all sorts of stuff. We we talked about hitch to our gear. We talked about H2R graphics a little. I gave a little tiny sneak peek into my mindset behind H2R graphics, and we talked about layouts and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, if you haven't watched that, uh, then go check it out on uh, Petra's channel, Tech Condo. You can click on the link, and I guess you can just type it in. Actually, that would that would work perfectly fine. Uh, so, let me see what's the what's the best plan of action. I think I think I'm just going to explore hitch to our gear a little bit for the next you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. And then after that, uh, we will see if you have any questions or be, I'll, I'll keep an eye on them as we go along, but be sure to shoot the questions in the uh, in the chat and I will get to them when I can. Otherwise, if you haven't used it before, this would be the best time to give you a little quick, um, a little quick demo of what hitch to our gear actually is. Because of course, it is possible that in all these months of 
me talking about it that you haven't actually checked it out. So um, let me make sure I go to the right computer. There we go. Uh, so now you can see on the computer, H2R Gear, this is the, this is the landing page that you'll, you'll land when you go to h2rgear.com, link below. Uh, and the, the whole idea for H2R Gear, as you might've saw in that intro video there, is for planning and creating um, these, what I call plans. Uh, you can throw equipment in there, you can create uh, cables and you know design everything and make sure everything links up the way you would expect it to. Scrolling down a little bit more, the, we have a community library with lots of gear in there, so you don't necessarily have to build all the gear yourself, and we'll, we'll explore that a little bit later too. And like I said, there's a builder for the gear, so you can build that. And uh, other things are like, there's a pack list in there, so it tells you how much you've packed, and uh, so on and so forth. Simple pricing, that's something I'm talking about today um, as I launch it. But if I log into my account here, and let me just pull back a little, I can see my gear plans in here. And you know, I'm just gonna jump straight into a gear plan because that's where all of the where all of the fun action is. So what you're looking at here is a gear plan. If you haven't already explored the application before, then this might be a little bit new to you. Um, but Basically, I have a collection of gear items, uh, cables, and text labels that are making up this little plan for me. So I, I've, I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of talk about the gear I use here in the, in the live, in the studio here, as it were. Everything, I've talked about it before where I have stuff on the desk here, and I have stuff in the cupboard back there. You can see the, um, the one that has the, uh, the drawer, the, the cupboard door is open there because that's where all the stuff stays and it gets quite hot in there whenever I'm running lots and bits and pieces. So uh, I thought it would be totally worthwhile leaving that open. Um, so jumping into the equipment here, I have the cupboard side and then I have the, um, the desk side. I'm just gonna have some water here. Yeah, everything's kind of divided into two sides. I have simplified this a little just for the purposes of the video today, but um, the equipment you can see in front of me is not actually too many things. I have the ATEM 156 monitor from SeaTech. That's the one that has four inputs, four outputs. I've talked about it a few times. I also have a microphone that's connected to uh, wirelessly. You can see I put this little label in there to explain that it's connected wirelessly to the ATEM, which is actually in the cupboard. If I just pull back a little, you can see the ATEM Mini Extreme over here is in the cupboard. And um, my cable is, well, it's not really a cable in that case. So it's a wireless connection between the two. Also on the desk in front of me is um, the Stream Deck connected to a Raspberry Pi, which is running the companion Pi software. And then I have my camera connected to the monitor here into one of the HDMIs and looping out of that HDMI and going into the sort of the brains of the operation, as I like to call it, in the cupboard here. We have the 8-port switch, which is doing all of the, um, the networking stuff. And then I have another companion connected to that, which I, or sorry, not another companion, another uh, Raspberry Pi connected to that, which is actually my uh, Playout B player. Usually I play out videos from that. Today I actually have a, um, a laptop just off screen here, which was also running Playout B for the Mac, which is a new-ish uh, release, which is excellent. Um, I don't know if it's released yet. Maybe it's not. Uh, Jonas, if you're here, you can let me know if it's actually released. Even even though I'm running it, so we'll see. Uh, but that's what I played it off. I uh, played off the video today, and all of that kind of centers into the ATEM Mini Extreme. All of its inputs are up here. All of its outputs are at the bottom. And uh, what you will see also is I have a desktop PC. That's actually what I'm using in front of me here. And I kind of have a weird system for my day-to-day -day computer operation where I put all of my devices through the ATEM. I actually run every single device that I look at, whether it's my computer, Zoom calls, everything goes through the ATEM. So this HDMI output of this PC is connected to the ATEM, and then the ATEM is connected across the room via a long HDMI cable to the ATEM 156 monitor, which is in front of me. So everything runs like that. Um, but like I said, I have that desktop PC, and it's running vMix right now, which is... Uh, oh, you know, maybe I could just show you that really quickly, just as a little, as a little sneak peek into some fun hitch to our graphics uh, goodness. Here's a comment from um, Petra, 
He made that cool video, multi-talented. Thank you so much. So what I have here is vMix running on the uh, computer that's in the cupboard back there. And I'm, I've got a browser source showing my live chat messages. Yes, I am using the very secretive alpha version of H2R graphics, which we will talk about plenty in future live streams, that's for sure. But um, from there, I can do key fill out of my external. If you've used, uh, if you've used vMix and if you've used that kind of stuff, that'll make sense to you. Um, let me just get rid of this uh, comment for a second. So vMix is running out two external outputs from this Decklink Duo, which is a PCIe card. And oh, I can see Jonas has, has replied that um, he will release. Uh, the Mac version on Wednesday. So that was a little sneak peek. I haven't showed it off, don't worry, Jonas. I just showed it working at the start, so. Um, <laughs> so like I said, I have the Decklink card attached there and it's actually spitting out two SDI key and fills, which are going into the ATAM. You can see there, key and fill. Key's going into one, fill's going into the other. And um, instead of doing like a Luma key or a chroma, chroma key for my graphics, I am doing everything via key fill in the ATEM. And it does mean, I've really, really enjoyed it. It does mean for very nice, uh, very nice graphics indeed. It really cleans up the lines a little between what I had before and what I have now. So um, for example, I can show this comment here. Let's remember to hit that like button. I appreciate that. If you hit it, I will be super happy about that. Um, that's from Sid J Eos. I'm just gonna say Sid, if that's okay with you. Um, or Sid J, yeah, that would probably make more sense. Uh, so I've get, I'm getting much cleaner graphics from this setup. I did some tweaking there at the start, so maybe they don't look great today, but they look good enough, I think. Uh, and it's definitely better than the Chroma style, and it's often better than the um, the Luma style to the, the sort of classic Luma King. So I quite like how it looks. Um, so back over to the computer, and let me change my screen here because I'm getting confused about all these buttons. That is a quick look at the... Um, at a plan that I have. Now, if you haven't used this before, what it does is generates a, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see it even better, but it generates a packing list. So everything I added to that plan over there automatically filters into the pack list. And then I can go through and say, yeah, I've packed my ATEM monitor and I've packed my camera and I've packed so on and so forth. You may also wanna use this list as like a sort of, did I remember to do certain things checklist? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a pack list, but I quite like that. Um, that style of using those words because it does mean that if, well, really the reason I built this was whenever I used to go on lots of gigs and I found that um, I would need these kind of features and the pack list to be generated and I, I made sure I brought all this stuff, especially when I was leaving the country. So it's good for that. And all the cables are grouped together. So I have four ethernet cables I need to bring. I have two SDIs, seven HDMIs, and finally the satisfying packed. That's really what I want to get to. Uh, so that that's sort of a, a glimpse at the uh, pack list. And did I zoom out too far? Maybe. Good enough. Um, I can also do lots, lots of other bits and pieces and of course add text labels and add gear. Now this is the interesting part. Um, because there's plenty of equipment out there, I wouldn't really want or expect everyone to add every single piece of equipment. You want some way of getting up lots of equipment that other people have added. So I've created this community library. So anybody who's added a, for example, ATEM Mini Pro, I can do a search for that. And I can see a range of ATEM Mini Pros that people have actually added. And also the ISO ones are popping in here too. Um, so I could choose any of these. Uh, I quite like this one, for example, and I choose add, and it adds that to my plan right there behind the, um, the label. And I can just connect that as I would any other piece of equipment. What's even nicer is that I can right click it and choose to edit it and give it a different name like my ATEM 2 and maybe I'll give it a different color so that it looks a bit different from the other one. And there we go. So that's my ATEM 2. And you can really take other people's pieces of equipment and then adjust it so it looks the way you want it to look. So I can imagine you can build up certain things. You can also take their equipment and edit it and, and all that and all that good stuff. So that's kind of a, a glimpse at the plan page. There are some settings you can also set. You can see here that the cables that I've set, for example, Ethernet 
style cables are all blue here. Um, these HDMI ones are, I think it's like a really dark gray that I set, but I'm not sure how well that comes over the stream. And then, like I said, I had these wireless dashed style cables and over here I've got USB and that's coming in red. Before I leave the plan page, one neat little feature that I really liked that I added recently was that whenever you, um, by default, whenever you add cables, they actually just come in automatically. So that works in most circumstances. Uh, automatic cables can work nicely. But what you can see here is, so for example, if I put that out there, the cables are kind of doing some work and they're automatically sitting there and they're all updating automatically, which is nice. And I can read where this cable goes for sure. What happens is whenever the diagram gets much more complicated, um, which a few people on this, I'm looking at you, Spike, a few people on this uh, stream watching today, they know what it's like whenever it gets more and more complicated for sure. So a very recent addition was um, cable pins, I'm calling them. And when you click on a part of the cable, you can actually just drag this little pin. And now I'm able to redirect the cable to where I want it to go. So for example, I'll redirect that one there. And maybe I'll take this one and redirect it over here. And now what I've got is uh, a way to clean up the plan a little bit more and it looks the way I want it to look, which it really has been a huge, um, a really huge change to the application. I really wanted everything to be a bit more automatic and you wouldn't have to configure these things, but it turns out that it's perfectly fine to add some configuration and I'm sort of letting that out there for sure. And I think these pins are one of many great features that are coming that will help that stuff. Let's backtrack a little. And what you'll see if you, um, if you take a look on the side over here, I can't really see it unless I change to that angle. Um, I have one of 10 active plans on my starter account. Now this is where it gets sort of where I'm all in on today's chat because for the next week, you will have 10 active plans on your free account. But as of next Monday, it'll go down to two, which will be sort of a starter entry way of getting in. It comes with a demo plan and then you can add another plan yourself. You can delete the demo plan. Now you've got two active plans that you can jump between. Whereas whenever you change that uh, subscription up to a paid subscription, you'll either get the 10 plans or up to 100 plans on the pro account. So if you find yourself using it more and more, which um, which it has been used more and more by people, then over time you might, might hit your limit and you can uh, always upgrade later. But I think two is a pretty solid starting point and um, I think that will work nicely for many, many, many situations, exactly. Uh, let's see, any any comments popped in just so I can make sure I don't get too far ahead of myself here. Uh, yeah, there's some chat about um, releasing the uh, Mac version of Playout B, which is excellent. Will it run on a Mac Mini 2012? Um, I will let, uh, I'm sure Jonas will get back to you on that. And uh, yeah, finally, cable pins. It's been a nice one. Yeah, nice cable pins. And Spike also says, I, I knew Spike would have something to say about that for sure. Spike, pins were so welcome. Thank you, John. No problem. Uh, it was a chat with Spike that really inspired me to get that going. And he had showed me some of his gear plans that he made. And I really realized it was time to add a little bit more configuration in there. So that's a, a more recent addition to the um, to the whole setup for sure. Um, so let me go back over to this and just talk about a little bit of customization you can do as well. Um, in the, oh, actually, I'll come back to that. So in my gear settings here, I don't know if I have any gear. Yeah, I do. I have one gear item, and this is where uh, my personally built gear items show up, which really brings us to the builder. And in here, you can build any item that you want. So, for example, if I wanted to build the original ATEM Mini, um, and I don't, I don't recommend that you do this, just just to get that out there, because there are plenty of ATEM minis in there. You don't need to build any more of those, um, unless you want to, of course, but uh, you don't need to. Uh, ATEM mini um, by Black Magic Design. I like to have it perfectly. Um, category, I'm going to choose, oh, I'm going to choose a switcher. And then I kind of like to be somewhat on brand. I know that the ATEM itself is sort of like a darkish, blackish color. And I know that some of the buttons on there are red, so I like to do like a, a black on red style. And then it comes to inputs and outputs. And um, one thing that um, is important is what, what's an input and what's an output. So for example, we have HDMI 
one, of course, is an input. And what's neat is if your input or output finishes with a number here, so for example, this one's HDMI one, then if I press another input, then it'll go to HDMI two, three, and four. And then if I add another one, I'll change this now to maybe the mic um, inputs. So the, the name is here, which is called mic one, the type of connection, and these are the ones that are supported currently, um, would be a mini jack, which is that little mini jack style connection. I can get mic two in there. And then a somewhat debatable topic would be the USB um, connection. Either that's an input or an output. We'll come back to that later, potentially. Over here on the outputs, I'll do HDMI one and two. No, wait, I'm thinking about the extreme, I wish. HDMI output, I'll just keep that as HDMI. What else is on the ATEM? Let's just do Ethernet here. Um, I like to call it ETH, Ethernet. And now if I scroll up here, you can see I have my uh, little uh, neat little gear item that I just created. Four HDMI inputs, two mic inputs, the USB is there, the Ethernet's there, and the HDMI is there. Um, so I have that good to go. What I can choose here is um, private or public. If you keep it private, it's all yours. It never gets touched. It lives in your private area. But if you change the setting, if you make it uh, public, then it even says here that uh, the gear item will be available to anyone who uses H2R gear, which is a neat way of getting as many things in there as you can. However, I've also got a little note down here saying heads up, things might be changed. So the idea behind this is that if you set a gear item to public, then you're saying that it's available to the public. And what I will do as the admin of the whole website is I'll log in every once in a while, double check everything and make sure things are up to date. Now, for example, ATEM minis, there's loads of those in there. You saw earlier when I typed in ATEM mini pro, we got plenty of results. So what I do is I pop in there every once in a while and I see what's going on, what people are creating publicly. I don't ever look at the private stuff, but the public stuff I'm interested in. And I will just um, do a pass on things that are duplicates. I will also maybe ch change some typos. If you wrote, um, for example, all lowercase ATEM mini pro, then I would change it to all uppercase ATEM because that's the way Blackmagic calls it. And that's the way I think it should be called in the application. So those are the kind of changes I might make and then I'll approve it um, for public use and it's available uh, within the add gear that I showed earlier as well. So that's the adding gear. I can just add it, but I'll, I'll not do that now because like I said, we have loads. Um, before I go any further, let's pop back over to the old chat and see, I, had, I saw some stuff pop in there, which is really excellent. I said pop a lot. I'm gonna stop saying pop. Um, where were we? Nice pins. What about custom cables? Um, there is some options for custom cable looks that I'll come to just in a second. But as for custom connections, that's something I'm really considering. I don't want to be the one who decides what cables are able to be used in there. Uh, so w I can come back to that definitely. Nope, I clicked it again. Um, does H2R gear have a snap to grid option when moving the items around? No, it doesn't currently, but it definitely could. And I know a pretty good way to implement that, but there's no reason other than I haven't done it yet. It's on the list and I'm going to get to it. So um, yeah, it, it will at some point. It will it will have the, the cables won't necessarily snap to a grid, but the items can be more snappy. So that's something I can definitely add.
Oh. What a fool. What a fool. I took some water and I didn't come back. Okay, I'm back. Thank you for... Uh... <laughs> I pressed the button and I didn't unpress the button. Let's see, where was I? Uh, I'll just backtrack a little. Is it possible to add several SIM devices at the same time? Let's continue from there. <laughs> so, um, I did show that. You probably watched me do it there, but I'll just show you again now that I'm explaining it. You can right click on any item and choose delete, but you can also right click on the item and choose uh, duplicate. So that will let you duplicate the items pretty fast. And it's just a, a sort of a different way to do it fast. Um, in, in the future, I do want an even better way to do that. And I have some ideas about that too. So, uh, but I think that will do a lot of, a lot of the work for you. Yeah, thank you for the no audio stuff. Um, this is why I'm glad I have the the uh, the chat right up on my screen here because I would have missed that for a long time if I just kept talking there. MJ, good question. Yeah, I guess that was about the um, about the adding several of the same devices. So uh, we covered that, but that is a good question. Uh, now that you have the duplicate feature, it's much faster than it was previously. But uh, but it, I know it could be faster definitely. Let's take one or two more questions and then we'll pop into the post show. I uh, nearly missed the live stream here from Dashcom. So I've just subscribed to the pro plan of historic gear. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, this would be an excellent time if anybody has been using it for a while and wants to jump in as a subscriber on the pro or the personal plan. Ha happy to have the um, support of the, the project and all that good stuff. It's really excellent to see the people already who have signed up. So uh, I, I really appreciate it a lot. And if you're using it lots and lots, then do jump in there and uh, support the project so I can just keep growing it, making it better and better because it's already getting better and better. And I can only imagine where it could get in the future if me or more than just me can work on it and build some great features. So, uh, so thanks. Is, uh, yes, you can. Oh yeah, sorry. That's another way to do it. So there is two ways to um, to add more gear. You can choose to, um, let me pop over and look at that. You can choose in the add gear model here, there is a little hide after adding gear item option, which whenever you do add a piece of equipment, item mini pro, I always type in item mini pro. Um, when I click on add here, it's not gonna close that window, it'll add. And then in the background, I can see that I have a couple of those. So that's another way to do it. But I, I quite like the um, I quite like the duplicate feature because something I didn't show earlier is that you can, oh no, I, did I show this? Yeah, no, I didn't show this. You can't edit the item within this page here where you can change some of the settings. You can switch some of the inputs to outputs. You can remove and replace the item. Um, so you can imagine that you would change, I did show you this earlier, maybe? I can't remember now, doesn't matter. I would change lots of different settings and names in here, and then I could duplicate this. So I'm now duplicating the blue version of this, not the, the black version that was in the add gear modal. So that's probably a better way to do it, actually. Great question and great follow-up as well. Thank you for that. Uh, doo -doo -doo, that one. Techcondo, Petra says, oh, you should have a combo box for brands. If it already exists, it's shown so you can select it avoiding several versions. Yes, I can show, I don't think I'm ready to show that off, um, but I have some really good improvements coming for sure. So um, so yeah, I, 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 can, I can show that off at a different time, but I have some improvements for that kind of pre-filtering and not avoid clashing of different things, so for sure. One last quick question. Before I go, uh, Ricardo says one thing important to say, although you have to approve the public when people create, they can use right away. You can just approve showing to other people. Yes, you're absolutely right. I should have said that. When it, when you set it to public, it's already available for you. Um, and it's, it's just the process for me checking it that I decide if it should remain public or go back to being private for you. So, but for sure, yeah. As soon as you create it, it's your, it's all yours. You can do whatever you want with it. You can delete it and uh, or change anything you want. So that's a good way to do it. Actually, I think we'll just stick around for a bit longer in the show show, and then we can pop into a longer post show if you're all up for it. Let me know if you are in the chat. Um, I'm happy to keep chatting. In fact, I'm gonna try to test something. Um, 
I just saw that there is a, a new poll feature in the YouTube. Well, it's new for me anyway. So um, what I can do here, look at me typing. I should have done this already. H2R gear before. Um, I'm setting up a poll for if you've used H2R gear before and um, I can ask the community and then in a few seconds, minutes, you will have the the poll pop up and we can take a look at that. I'm excited to see how well that works. Um, I'm hoping that I can pull that into graphics at some point too, which would be really, which would be really nice. But for now, let's see. Um, do -do -do. And Matt wants to know, uh, on ter in terms of the audio side of things, can you have two inputs and then group them as a stereo source, please? Not quite yet. What you could do in that case is have a sort of middle box, which takes in two, for example, XLRs and sends out one XLR into whatever product you want. For now, that would be the um, the way to do it. And this is a great one from Miguel here. Can we export to PDF? That will come whenever I can get it working well. I've been testing exporting to JPEG or PNG and PDFs in the background for a little while, and I haven't really found the best way to do it to look great. So I'm going to add it whenever it looks as good as it can look. So that's that's the, the aim, definitely. And uh, I've, I've finally gotten to the muted, no sound um, stuff. So I muted myself. Oh, what a fool. Um, lost audio and you're back. Excellent. Thank you for keeping me on point, definitely. Is there an option here from MT asking, is there an option to rotate the items? I haven't found anything. Uh, it would come in handy to arrange things around. There's not currently a way to do that. And that is my answer to everything here. Um, but I want to answer not yet. Exactly. That's not yet is my answer to everything on this uh, stream so far. Uh, because the way I want it to work for now is, is continue to be top top down. So everything inputs on the top and outputs on the bottom. And over time, I may find that it's there's a way to do that differently. But for now, that's that's the way to do it. Uh, no audio, no audio. We're back. Excellent. I think I covered that one. Uh, Miguel asks a question. It's completely different, which is no problem. How much bitrate are you streaming? Thank you for all. Thank you for all. And what encoder? I'm using the ATEM Mini Extreme, which is doing all the encoding today. And if I look at my multi view, it's running at about four megs or so. Um, I usually do between two and four because my internet holds that pretty well. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Thanks for the question. And yes, VMix would have shown you a huge red bar, low volume flashing as it happened more often. Yeah, that, that's a feature I need, um, most certainly. In fact, trying not to break everything. Okay, I just got this in to play with. I bought this actually, not, not just got it in to play with, I bought this. The Web Presenter HD, which is a really, really cool device, which might have solved or fixed that issue. I could have had the display up and I would have seen the audio wasn't bouncing. So more to come on that in the future. I'll just pop it back there. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. Back to the questions here. Oh, there's lots of questions rolling in. I'm way behind today. And uh, I see my poll is getting answered nicely, which is which is cool. So far, 76, 74% of people say that they have used h 2 gear before, which is, which is excellent. Thank you for using it. Oh yeah, that's what the answer, not yet for the poll was. Yeah, exactly. Not yet. I'll take all of the no responses in the poll to mean not yet for sure. Uh, Sport Flow wants to ask, is there any way to plan and draw racks? Have you thought about it? I have, I have thought about it. That would be a definitely, an interesting side step. Uh, it could fit in the, the plan pretty nicely. I have some ideas about that where I want to do some fun stuff. So yes, there's thoughts about it and that will come if it looks good, definitely. Alvin, can you move to the pro plan for just a month in case you suddenly need to create for a series of jobs? You definitely can move to the pro plan, but you will have to, it does say in there whenever you sign up, um, there's, there is an option, or not an option, a note in there saying that you can update your billing information and you can cancel your subscription at any time. 
through the, the website. I didn't want to make it a hassle for people to cancel because I don't like when other services do that, so I didn't want to be that person. But the way I built it right now, there's no way to upgrade just yet, as much as I would love people to do that even easier. But you can just send me a message and just say, hey, here's my email. I want to go from this to this, and um, I can flip the, flip the switch on my end, and you'll get the approval to do all that stuff. So there is a way to do that. And that will let you do up to 100 plans on the pro plan for sure. You can do it for a month. Let me know, and then we can, we can slip it back down again. So get in touch, definitely. Is there a way to share a packing list so multiple people can pack? Great question. Not currently either. That's definitely something on the, on the ideas board for sure. If I just go back over here, you will see that there is a share option, um, but it is a, a paid feature. And as you can see, I'm not paying for it. No, this is my test, test, test account. But you can share the plan with people and it creates a read-only version of the plan. But uh, for now, there's no pack list in there because I've really just thought of it as a way to show people the plan that you're working on instead of helping you pack. But yes, absolutely. It, all ideas are good ideas. And if you have any specific ideas, either you can send me a message on Discord. There's a link below this video to join the Discord if you're not already in there. You can join about 1,400 people chatting about all this fun stuff, not just H2R apps, but all sorts of production stuff. So you can send me a message through there or email, website, all the good usual ways. I like to hear all the ideas. And uh, just keep on rolling on with the comments. Do, do, do. Not finding, um, not finding micro or mini or display port to HDMI output for cameras when adding new camera to the laptop. Any plans to add custom specific cables? Yes, I think I just mentioned that a little bit before, where I want to give the user you control of cables a little bit more. I just have some stuff to figure out before I get that right. But yes, I don't want to be the one who decides what cables are definitely used because it gets complicated. Like you've already mentioned several HDMI types that I don't want to try and cover every single one of them. So, yes. Export to images, we talked about that a little bit. And what about power connectors and cables? I thought a lot about power. I've decided to skip it for now, but if I let people create their own connections, then power can be one of those. So, we might get there. Um, yes, Frubo says, Export function PDF, PNG, JPEG would be great. You're absolutely right. I'm really interested in that. Um, and yes, like uh, like Shiv says here, can we print this to give handouts to show guys? Um, yeah, I think one of the reasons I don't necessarily want the PDF is for the printing option. It would be great if everything just kind of stayed digital. I'm happier that way. But once it becomes PDF, whenever I add that, then for sure you could... Uh, do that. PDF export from C. Ricardo here saying PDF export would be super cool to stay in the vector realm. Absolutely, that's what I'm thinking too. Trying to keep things nice and crisp and clean. And you can always, always, always print page and CD, save as PDF. That definitely works. You might find it a little bit quirky for some of the cable colors, but that definitely works. And ha oh yeah, we're talking about the. Um, the web presenter, HD. Uh, Jared says, I have been waiting for ages for that to come out. Where did you find it in stock? I found this in stock in a store called Voos, Voos Store, um, which is here in Sweden. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they ship all over the place. Voos Store AB. Let me see. I know they have a shop, like an actual, you know, good old classic physical shop. In, uh, in Malmö here in Sweden, but um, I would imagine that you can just get them to ship it wherever. So if I post a link in the chat to where I bought it, it's not an affiliate link, it's just where I happen to buy it. Um, pretty fast delivery place. Here in Sweden, it seems like not many people want them, so it worked out for me and I got one. And MT says, nice, I got mine two weeks ago, cool. Alexander wants to know, any thoughts about Cosmo Streamer, it's a Raspberry Pi adapter for DJI gimbal cameras like the Osmo. It converts them to PDC cam with object tracking and 1080p output. I am not familiar, I'm afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say it, um, but I am not familiar. You'll have to, um, I'll have to check it out. I, I'm not, I don't know that one. 
Why do cameras and mics have black boxes by them? Yeah, I, you know, I guess one of the things I was trying to do was be a little bit, a little bit creative at times. So microphones have a little, uh, what looks like a bit like a microphone on top of it. Cameras look a bit like a camera. Here's the, the view finder on this side and the lens on this side. You know, just to, just to make it a little bit more, for example, I like this one in the, um, in a PCIe card, it has the little, what looks like the little connection plate on the side. So just to give it a little bit more um, interest and intrigue. You can also, you can always change the category of the, uh, of the item if you don't like the look of those little designs. And uh, whenever you pick a category, for example, if you pick a camera, then it will change it and add those little things on there. So definitely you could do that. Okay, let me see. I just want to pop through a few more questions and then we'll uh, we'll go into the post show. It's been an extra long show show today. And then after that, we'll go into the post show and answer some more questions a little bit more relaxed. I have my beer to open and enjoy while we chat about anything and everything that comes into this stuff. But I'm interested in hearing about H2R gear even more. And I can see here in the poll, I can't even show you this just yet, but have you used H2R gear before? We're at 64% yes, 36% no. So that's changing. I'm hoping that next time I ask, it'll be more like 100 yes and 0% um, and, uh, no. But 81 votes is pretty good so far. I lost track of where I was. And yes, there was no option in the poll for I'm using it now. You're absolutely right. Um, Matt says, sorry if I missed, but I suggested on Discord about color coded if an input or output was not being used. Um, you did suggest that, um, that's not a, a feature just yet, but it does remind me that I wanted to talk about color coding in general. So like I said, I have colors of my cables here. These ones are blue, which are the ethernet ones. And, um, I have SDI is green and dashed as you can see. And I have configured these personally. So if I pop into my settings, I have all my cable colors here. So HDMI is a very light gray. Uh, I guess I never had a light brown, but there you go. And I can choose to be more like a dotted or a dashed. I quite like solid for that. Makes sense to be solid for that. But something like wireless connection here, I have as a dashed line. So uh, I can choose whatever color I want for any of these. And these are used in all of my plans across the board. So that's just a way to customize it to the way that you want to have it. You know what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just say a big thanks to my um, wonderful supporters on the channel. Thank you so much for all the members of the channel. You can always join below. There's a join button below all the videos and what you get there is if you become a super, super, super duper supporter of the channel, uh, you get a little mention on the weekly live stream. And now I am trying to uh, find <laughs> find where that is in the in the portal here um, but I just want to say thanks as always to uh, Patrick Lenz and Cloud Bedrock for becoming super supreme supporters of the channel and also everybody else who's become members of the channel too I appreciate it a, a lot it actually helps the channel an awful lot to do that so I do appreciate anybody who becomes a member for sure you know what we're going to do is we're going to pop into the post show and take some more questions so I'll see you there just in a few seconds don't go anywhere, stick around. I'm just gonna get my beer, see you then.